batting average today. She has been Dylan in the circle all season long and looking to continue with that sophomore campaign. Again, just those four outs to work with a day ago, but she came in and got two huge strikeouts for Tennessee and Karen Lee. She came in clutch and Gotchel and Pickens, both of them are just so strong for this Tennessee team and they're gonna take this program forward. We have the Ohio State. We have the Lady Vols and they do way here on Sunday as first pitch is low to Tegan Cordelletti here in the leadoff spot here today. She had hit number one yesterday for Ohio State, dribbled about five feet in front of home plate, but she has speed in that left-handed batter's box. That went in there for a strike, one and one. And Pickens already coming right off the bat, coming aggressive. That's what she's gonna do. One of those first two pitches that you see from Pickens is probably going to be one of her best pitches that Ohio State needs to attack. Pickens throws absolute gas as that one is going right by Cordelletti there. You mentioned they're in the low to mid 70s. That's hard to see if you're at the dish for any opposing batter. No, it doesn't happen often. Often, And one of her role models, Monica Abbott, actually threw 77 fastest ever thrown. That one in hard and in for a ball, two and two. So Pickens is just following in her footsteps. She says actually her goal is to beat the 77. So could happen this year or maybe in the next couple. Not a bad role model to have. Monica Abbott as that one is rolled over third baseline and it will run foul. We'll redo the 2-2. Two -two. This game four of the weekend for these two sides. Tennessee a perfect 3-0 in the Tennessee Invitational. Now going 45 and four overall since this inception of this tournament back in 2010. Ohio State with that two and one record with the lone loss last night to Tennessee. And Faith, I don't know about you, but all the rain that we saw yesterday and then just this beautiful Sunday, just get you excited for some softball here in March. And strike three is called Carlin Pickens. One out, one strikeout today. And Pickens, she's just hammering that outside corner. Corner, You can see it. That's a beautiful screwball. And I don't know if I could stand up there and just watch that go by. Beautiful start from Carlin Pickens here on a Sunday as she'll face the two-hole spot in this lineup. It's Taylor Heckman, the outfielder, senior, with that 414 batting average. The pitch, no one away, 2-0. Heckman is someone that Coach Shane Lee was super excited to talk about. She has improved so much since her freshman year. She wasn't a big role player last year, but now she's in that starting lineup leading this team. So foul that one off back at the screen. Hitters count at 2-1 here. You mentioned her being so much improved from junior to senior campaign. She hit 182 a season ago. Nice start for Heckman this year, and she will ground that one over to fall, throwing it first is in time. Nice play by the freshman shortstop for out number two. And that was a hard hit by Heckman, but Bella Faw, just a freshman, moving her feet really well up towards the middle. She got a really lucky bounce right to that glove to help her out there as well. Now in the three hole spot here today, Jasmine Burns, they call her Jazzy on this squad. One of the most talented freshmen that coach Kovac Shanley has brought into the Ohio State program in her 11th season in Columbus. Coach Shanley described her as one of the biggest names that has come into the program in a very long time. So already making an impact as a freshman. Quickly behind the count here to Pickens at 0-2. Pickens looking to work a quick one, two, three inning in inning number one for the Big Orange. The 0-2. Line left field and that will be off the top of the mitt for Bella Fall. Hard hit softball there off the bat of Burns and she's got a two out single in inning number one. 
I already love what Ohio State is doing here. You have Burns and Heckman both back to back. They have strong hits right up the middle. And you notice there with Burns, she does a great job extending that pitch was actually on the outside corner. So for her to be able to pull it to the left center side, she extended well. Ohio State has barreled up a couple of softballs so far today. As that one is kind of an awkward swing out of number 27, Cami Quarter Cracks. Quarter Cracks, a junior. Just dipped under 300 last night after going 0 for 3. She did see Pickens once at inning number six a night ago. The sophomore standout will deal the 1 1. Quarter Cracks rolls over that one. McKenna Gibson is there and on to first for out number three. Ohio State strands a runner. She's going to throw in the low 60s. She's actually more of a movement pitcher than what we saw out of Allison Smith yesterday. But also, Coach Shane Lee says she's going to show a lot of emotion. She's a fiery type pitcher, but that's exactly what you need when you're playing a top 10 team like Tennessee. Emily Ruck will face one of the best bats in the country, the Tennessee home run queen herself at the dish. And this is a Tennessee lineup, one through nine, that is as scary as it gets in all the country. From one through nine, you think you have one batter where you're like, hey, I got through Kiki Malloy, but then right after you got more to come. And there's power up and down. Every single one of these Lady Vols players can hit a ball over that wall. Kiki Malloy got her record-setting 58th home run. Another run in February to name her the Tennessee all-time home run queen herself. Number 58 overall against Loyola Marymount, pat passing the legend Megan Gregg here in Knoxville. The 2-1 fouled straight back and Rupp is coming right at Malloy here in the first. Well, what I love about Malloy is not only is she a big home run hitter, but so many times with home run hitters, you see lots of strikeouts. She does have quite a few strikeouts, but overall, she has over a 400 batting average. And she'll roll over that one. And as you mentioned, right on time, you just get on base. Kiki Malloy will lead off single in the first. She's a hitter that's going to come up there, and she's going to hit the ball, whether it's a single, double. She'll even drop down that bunt if you need her to. But if you notice right here, Malloy looks like she actually got around that ball just a little bit and was able to keep her hands high because it looked like a rise ball right into left field. I will say, though, from this past weekend, it seems like every ball is going into left field for Malloy. Kiki Malloy getting out in front of pitches here this weekend thus far, and she will... Take a couple steps towards second. Pretty much when she is on first base, she might as well put her at second. Kiki Malloy, as fast as it gets, just an all-around stud athlete for Karen Weekly and her squad. She's bluffing down there at first. She'll get about three steps and slam on the brakes as Zeta Pooney sees a strike in at one and one. Pooney up in the lineup today, all the way up to the two-hole spot, and Malloy's off and running. Kind of a quick jump, but she has gone down at second base for out number one. That was an amazing throw by Burns there. She knew that Kiki Malloy was going to take off right away. You can see Malloy, she did a great jump, just got her hand. You can see she almost tried to get around the tag, but just wasn't quite enough. That was a beautiful tag as well by Hackenbrock. In the 5-6 hole, long throw by the shortstop will not get Pooney. Quarter Kratz had to go all the way back to her right, and that's a tough throw from deep in that shortstop hole. And Pooney, she, you can tell she doesn't even get all of that, but she's able to stay on it and get it deep into that shortstop hole to beat it out to first base. Beats that one by about a half step, and now McKenna Gibson will step in and swing and miss at strike one. The 
you call her Boo Gibson here in this Tennessee roster. And Boo comes from an interesting place, I hear. Yes, yeah, she was. She's actually called Boo because she looks like the little girl from Monsters Inc. So that's where she got her nickname, and it's just stuck with her in her softball career. So I absolutely love it. Monsters Inc. is as good as it comes from my early days. I haven't seen that one in a while. Gibson checking in here, a one-two count. Boo, all SEC first team a season ago. One of the catalysts for Tennessee and Karen Weekly getting back to the Women's College World Series. That one will get by the catcher, Burns, and now Pooney will have a free 60 feet and now a runner in scoring position for the Big Orange. So these are the little mistakes that Ohio State has to watch. When you play a top 10 team, you can't let them get extra bags. you got to make routine plays, even make stellar plays to be able to beat a team like Tennessee. The 2-2 is lined straight into the East Tennessee sky and quarter cracks is there for out number two. Lauren Miller had herself a Friday to open up day one of the Tennessee Invitational. Four home runs over two games and a three run or a three home run day in game one against Missouri State on Friday. 0 of three yesterday. But this is a dangerous bat in this lineup. Sometimes it's even tougher when you have an amazing day at the plate and you're seeing that ball like a beach ball and then to turn it around the next day and be able to adjust and be like, all right, I just need to hit singles. She'll sky that one in on the infill dirt and a grab made over at second by Farley for out number three. Tennessee. She absolutely loved this team, loved her players. You see those five NCAA tournament appearances? They've all been here in Knoxville. So if you see Ohio State penciled in on Selection Sunday, they're probably coming here to Knoxville. Coach Shanley's got an interesting story, maybe not the perfect road to Ohio State for herself as she did play and went to school at that school up north, as they call it in Columbus. She is a graduate of the University of Michigan. So you gotta always wonder, in interviews when you're interviewing for a job like that, you gotta think, okay, I went to Michigan, now I'm at Ohio State, but I'm just blessed to be at a Big Ten school, I'm sure. I'm sure she loves staying in her conference, but also you kind of have that little chip on your shoulder where like, man, I got to beat that team that I used to play for. So I'm sure anytime Ohio State faces Michigan this year, she has a little bit of an extra like, hey, we need to win this one, guys. And, and she was a phenomenal player at Michigan. She won two regular season titles, three Big Ten conference titles in the tournament and then three trips to Oklahoma City in the Women's College World Series. And now she's patrolling third base in the sidelines in Columbus and she has been a phenomenal head coach for Ohio State. That went in upstairs, did she go? She did not. And that will run the count full. Carlin Pickens doing battle with Destiny Nori here in the second. Pickens in Tennessee using those new communication devices. 3-2 in is in, strike three. K number two for Carlin Pickens and a good start for the sophomore. I love that pitch by Pickens. She comes in hard with that screwball on the inside corner and you can tell Nori was just jammed up. Denny wasn't even on time for it. The pitch before that though, even though it came in hard, that was a little bit of an off speed. So she throws her off speed at normal speed of other pitchers in the college zone. Kind of a setup there, right there on that pitch you think, but there with um, the 2-2 two -two count kind of setting up for that 3-2 count. Absolutely, coming in on the inside after you see something that's a little bit more off speed and trying to stay on time with that is tough as a hitter. Kirsten Eppley will stand in. She had a phenomenal three-run saving grab as we showed you in our open back in inning number one a day ago. 
0 for 3 from the dish yesterday was Epley. Two one to Epley will roll foul. Kind of alluded to that watch. It's it's kind of like an Apple Watch that Carlin Pickens is wearing, and and that's really what they're doing all around the softball game here this season. And when we spoke with Coach Shanley even during our midweek conversation, she even alluded to it's just so much better because pitchers aren't out there doing a math equation on their wrist this year. Oh, absolutely. Even as a fielder or a pitcher, we always had those armbands, had to switch for every different pitcher. And sometimes you'd hear your coach in the dugout yelling five, four, six, just trying to figure it out and hear over all the fans was so tough. That one will ground foul. And it does make for a faster game, and as well with the pitch clock now, this is also Ohio State's first weekend where they have seen a live pitch clock. Coach Shanley and the Buckeyes will see that in Big Ten Conference play, so. Good to see that here early in Knoxville, and Carlin Pickens is dealing early. She has faced six batters and struck out three of them. You can tell Pickens is loving that inside corner. If I was Ohio State, I think I'd be backing off the plate a little bit to be able to hit because she's hitting that pitch right on the river, just a little bit on the white of that plate. Great placement. You mentioned that Pickens can throw gas, but she can paint those corners as well as she's been doing here early. Sam Hackenbrack will grab a bat and here in the second, Got those two home runs, 13 ribbies here this season, does the senior. And she'll line that one, and Bella Faw is there. A couple nice plays from the freshman at short, and nothing doing for Ohio State in the inning. Carlin Pickens, have yourself a couple first innings. Tennessee will grab the bats and look to strike trips to the Women's College World Series. They made it to their bracket final last season, falling to Florida State who eventually lost to the powerhouse Oklahoma. But Tennessee, regular season SEC title, tournament title. That is very hard to do in a loaded Southeastern Conference. That was also the first time in history where they have won both titles for the Volunteers in the SEC. Taylor Panham will step in here for Tennessee, the sophomore had the biggest hit of the night about 14 hours ago now. And she'll get a hit here. Stay hot, Taylor Panel. She'll round first and she'll glide into second with a leadoff double. Taylor Panel has been coming up clutch for the Lady Volunteers. She, you can tell that pitch was a little bit on the outside corner, but you can see she actually rolls her hands, take it, takes it over to left center field and does a great job staying extended through it. But what a way to start off an inning here, see if Tennessee can get something going. Taylor Panel just started six games a season ago and appeared in seven now 18 starts, 19 appearances for panel. She'll be big for Tennessee if they look to get back to OKC this season. Now Destiny Rodriguez will step in down from the two hole tonight here batting sixth. Don't let that fool you. This is a phenomenal bat for Rodriguez here in her sophomore campaign. Rodriguez, 27 starts last season. We know that will go up. And she has now started in her 18th contest today. Rodriguez wasn't the everyday starter last year, but it seems she's really worked hard in this offseason and she's made a big impact. Coach Weekly says that she is a top level teammate and a player that she can always depend on. Her batting average up 56 points already this season. And she had one of the biggest hits for Tennessee they've had in the early season. Back in the opening weekend, Tennessee down one and a home run. First career home run in the college ranks for Rodriguez. She's got four long balls now here in the 24 season and she'll draw a walk there. I 
I don't mind that walk by Emily Ruck because now you don't have any outs, but you can make a play at any bag for Ohio State, and just a lot easier than having to worry about the run Taylor panel over at second. Panel at second, Rodriguez at first, and I feel like we've said this quite a bit in Rocky Top, a leech sister will grab a bat and hit for the big orange, the freshman Alana Leach batting 290 on the season will step in. I feel like Tennessee is all about getting families up here because you have the Leeches, you had the Renfros, you had the Weeklies. So it seems like Tennessee is very much a family type school of like, hey, my sister's gonna come in two years, how about that? They call them the legacies, right? She would be a legacy here. Alana Leach steps in, two-time All-State outfielder at the Woodlands. 472 career batting average down in the state of Texas. Number 12 prospect in the country in the 2024 class will step in that left-handed batter's box. Ahead in the count, 2-1. Emily Ruck's pitch is lined back up the middle, and that play just kind of an awkward carom, but it works out perfect for the Buckeyes for out number one. You can't ask for anything better than that. Hackenbrack, she's laying it all out on the field. I do love the diving attempt, and she just scooch, scooches that ball right to second base. Works out perfectly for Ohio State to at least keep one or couple runs off the board. That is an assist, whether it be intentional or non-intentional. It'll get the job done for the Buckeyes and get out number one. So the double play still in order here for the Vols, but Julia Kutsoyanopoulos from Mission Vejo, California will stand in, one of the leaders on this team. A senior transfer from Arizona a couple seasons ago. I loved watching her yesterday because usually you don't see a lot of emotion coming out of Katsuyanopoulos, but you could see she was smiling over at first base, having a good time, and you can tell she's really passionate about this Tennessee team. Katsuyanopoulos will play anywhere in the field for Tennessee. She's the battery mate to Carlin Pickens today. She caught pretty much the whole entire season. Last year, she'll swing and miss there. And the Oklahoma transfer, Sophia Nugent steps in. She goes behind the dish. So, Katsuyanopoulos played a little first. She played left field yesterday as well. But again, back behind the dish here today. I know we say it a lot, but Coach Weekly, yes, calls her the defensive wizard. But it really is. Do you know how hard it is for most players that are outfielders, infielders, and a catcher to be able to play all three of those positions at a D1 level? If you ask most outfielders, they'll say, I never want to see the dirt. You just call Cut Soyanopoulos an athlete, but she'll pop up to Emily Ruck there for out number two. And now the freshman, one of the most talented freshmen that has came to Knoxville. is the number five prospect in the 2024 class. Bella Faw from Sugar Hill, Georgia will step in. She struggled with the bat so far early this season. But typically when you make a couple plays in the field, it kind of relays to the batting's, batting box. And made a nice play for out number three earlier in the top of the second. She'll look to drive in the first run today for Tennessee. Oh, we'll see that one in for a strike. 0-1. Oh Fall's got one hit this season. Came back on February 25th against Hawaii. And she'll swing and miss at a rise ball there. Ruck going right at Faw in the nine spot. Check that good catch there, partner. Cameron Sarvis will actually step in for Faw. 
Sarvis a 400 hitter. And I think Karen Weekly kind of wanting to push the gas pedal here early. We'll get in the experienced Sarvis. So. The sooner you can get on top of a team early in those innings, especially for Tennessee, that's really where they can put it to them for Ohio State. But Emily Ruck, she's done a great job right now. She is spinning the ball well. She's keeping Tennessee off balance. If you notice, most of their hits coming off the end of their bats, they're just trying to get it through the zone because they're so early on these pitches. Yo, two swung on and missed. And Ruck gets a huge K, stranding two Tennessee runners here at the second. Cordelletti leading off this offense with a high 400 batting average. Cordelletti due up third here in inning number three. Ohio State's already got one hit today. It came from Jazzy Burns. Two out single in the first. Hannah Church with one of those high batting averages as well at 361, and she's ahead in the count 2-0. Oh. Church here in her sophomore campaign. We'll see ball three inside. Played in 44 games a season ago for Coach Shanley, 39 starts. He was named 3A Player of the Year in back-to-back -back seasons in the state of Florida. And right now, Church is in a little bit of a catching battle with Jasmine Burns over there, but they're able to kind of rotate. But Coach Shanley says that she loves that she's able to keep Hannah Church's bat in the lineup. You see her here as a DP. So as long as you can offensively hit the ball, that's how you're going to get in every starting lineup at the D1 level. And she hits well. Again, with that 361 average, 10 ribbies here in her sophomore campaign. 3-2 pitch upcoming. A softly hit right side. Rodriguez will step in and fire it over to first for out number one. That's the pitch that Pickens has been living with today so far. She's really using her rise ball as well as this screw ball on the inside corner. And you can see Church just got jammed up. When you have a pitcher that's throwing like 71, 72 miles per hour, you have to be early on that pitch or back off that plate so that you can barrel up that ball. Something I love to see from Carlin Pickens, she always has a smile on her face. Whether things are going well, things aren't going so well, she really relies on those teammates behind her. She'll face the nine hole and Farley here. And Farley will shoot that into the gap, the five, six hole, another single for Ohio State. They're just one hit shy of tying what they did yesterday. And we're only here in the third inning. So a lot better, bat, better with the bats today. I think they're starting to attack early in their counts and they know what Pickens is going to work. She's been working a rise ball. She's working that inside corner a lot on those righties, but also the outside pitch on those lefties, which you can see Farley did a great job taking it to the left side. Pickens did come in for four relief outs a night ago. And you got to think as the pitch is in, kind of a bunt left side is pushed foul. I haven't coached 23 seasons in college softball. That's why I'm up here. But Karen Weekly did throw out Pickens for those four outs in last night's game. So that kind of gives Ohio State a little bit of an edge. Those four batters can come back into the hotel and say, hey, this is what I saw from Pickens yesterday. So just kind of a little sample of the hard hitting sophomore they saw a night ago. I definitely wouldn't be surprised though if we saw Peyton Gottschall later in this game. That's why there's such a great one-two punch with pitch Pickens and her is because either one of them are interchangeable and they're both aces and can complement each other so well. Gottschall had herself a night last night. Throwing the strikeouts, only allowed the one hit. Excuse me, the two hits a night ago. Tennessee was kind of in a jam in inning number six. Coach Weekly then called upon Pickens and four outs in a row with two Ks. The one two in is low to the leadoff batter in Cordelletti.
Mentioned Ohio State trying to flip that batting order. They got the nine hole spot and Farley on and now Cordelletti will ground that over. Fall will go to first. That's her only play and Cordelletti beats it out down the line. She has got some wheels on her. And this is where Ohio State needs to rally. The top of their lineup is what's been seeing the ball well and Cordelletti does a great job hitting that ball in the dirt. Bella Foss, she's got to charge fast on those pitches. She knows that she has literally 2.7 seconds to make that play or else she's not gonna get that out at first. Coach Karen Weekly will come out and discuss with her pitcher and infield. Ohio State, and the best opportunity they've had in these 10 innings against Tennessee to punch a run across the board. And it's that meat of that lineup, the two hole spot and Taylor Heckman do up. I think this is a great spot for Coach Weekly to come out, just chat with Tennessee, tell him, hey, let's calm down a little bit here. Let's get a couple outs. She has four outs, a few options here, make the play at third, get the lead runner. Do they want to turn a double play? So if you notice right now, the middle infield is actually playing deep in this game. So you can predict that they're probably going to make the play to second and turn that double play to get out of the inning. You mentioned double play depth up the middle. Taylor Heckman does get down the line quickly. But a good opportunity for Ohio State here in the third. Wearing those glistening sil silver batting helmets. And Heckman had destination planes for the river on that one. And the count evens up at one and one. You see that big smile there from Heckman. She gave a little smile. You can tell she was just over that. She was actually early, but I love to see that. At least she's being aggressive. She's going after that pitch. But that was a beautiful pitch by Pickens. Pickens 1-1. One, one. It's fouled back to the screen. And Carlin quickly ahead in the count. One and two here on the two hole. Taylor Heckman 0 for 1 today. She grounded out to Bella Faw back in the first. So this is where Heckman is going to have to watch out for either that rise ball or that off speed here from Pickens. Pickens goes off speed and gets a swing and a miss. Three strikeouts for the sophomore today. And that was a great pitch, pitch option by Pickens to come back with that off speed. She saw that Taylor Heckman was early, earlier in the count with her off speed. So she says, I'm gonna come back with it. And she even throws it maybe a little more white on the plate than maybe we would like to see, but that was a beautiful pitch by Pickens. She adds to that strikeout total now up to four here today. Now Jasmine Burns will grab a bat in the three hole spot. She's got a single today. A single would likely score a run and put Ohio State in front for the first time against the Lady Vols this weekend. You got to know this is a pressure situation from Burns. And that one's in for strike number two. And there's Pickens. She's fired up. She said, right here, let me go at Burns. Your freshman season playing against the number nine team in the country. The one, two. Inside. I think Burns helped her case there. That was a pitch just a little bit on the inside corner for Pickens, but you could tell she wanted that pitch. But you also see that she is more focused in this inning as she works through right after that meeting with Coach Wheatley. The 2-2 is hit right up the middle. Pickens is there and will just soft toss that one over to first. Carlin Pickens works in and out of trouble. Welcome back to Knoxville. Six hits, no runs combined between these two sides. And Kiki Malloy will look to try to get Tennessee on the board. And she has got the power to do so. 63 home runs. A program record passing Megan Gregg last month for all time here at Tennessee. Well, we talk about our home runs, but I've also mentioned it earlier in this game. She's someone who's going to come back, hit singles, doubles, triples, has a lot of speeds, but she comes from a family that is very athletic, and this is 
the part of the lineup that you do not want to face as a pitcher if you're at Ohio State. Malloy, one of the toughest outs in the country. We mentioned those 63 total home runs. She also has 167 RBIs in her time in Knoxville, and she still bases at a clip that we haven't seen in the SEC. 132 stolen bases for Kiki Malloy, but behind in the count, 0-2. She'll throw her hands at that one. Will it dunk in? Yes, it will. Malloy with a really hard turn, but she gets back, ball dropped, and she's standing on second base. Heads up, base running by the phenom, Kiki Malloy. That's a way to start an inning, but the little miscommunication by Ohio State, it's just playing catch. You can see that ball. Kiki Malloy actually casted her hands out on that one and took it over to that right field, just a little bloop. But she saw this is great base running by Malloy. The second that ball dropped out of Hackenbrack's hand, or glove, she knew she was taking off towards second base. When you play a lot of softball, you know immediately that instinct is so much quicker here in her fifth season. Just heads up base running there by Malloy, and she'll stand on second with Zeta Pooney stepping in. Well, it also helps when you have a little bit of speed. I would say if I was at first, I don't think I'd take off because I don't think I'd make it. But I'm a little slower than Kiki Malloy. It's hard to have the wheels on you that Kiki Malloy does. And Zayna Pudi will step in. One for one today. Had a single back in inning number one. As did Malloy. But Tennessee unable to punch a run across. Kind of reminds me of yesterday's contest. Tennessee kind of would they loaded the bases three times in yesterday's contest. They did all of that before the fifth inning when they opened it up. So they just scored two runs off those bases loaded opportunities. But an opportunity here for Pooney. Ahead in the count, three and one. Out and outside, and she'll jog down to first. Couple on for McKenna Gibson. And again, I don't think that is a bad walk by Emily Ruck. I wouldn't be pitching anything too far over the white, especially against a player like Pooney. And you can see a pinch runner is coming in now. But now you have runners at first and second, and there's a force out at third. And that looks like Katie Taylor is coming in as a pinch runner over at first base. So just trying to add a little extra speed. One big hit here can automatically put two runs on the board. Taylor gets around the base pass quickly, and there is all speed on first and second for Tennessee, and Boo Gibson will step in. Strike number one to the batter. Tennessee has strung together four hits so far today. Nothing to look at on the scoreboard yet, but Gibson at 379 this season, 18 RBIs in her junior season. She can blow this one open quickly. And one is low, and that one won't trickle away far enough from Jazzy Burns for Malloy to take third. And you could tell Kiki Malloy actually had a little face right after that pitch. She knew that the second that ball hit the ground, she should have taken off for third. But it would have definitely been a bang-bang play. The 2-1 is launched left side and just foul. Tennessee had two runs come into home plate there. But our third plate umpire, Heath Walker, who was behind the dish last night, saw that one foul, and it was foul indeed. What a rope hit there by McGibson. She barreled that one up. Now evened up at two and two. Rusk looking for another big out in the third. And McKenna Gibson, she had such a breakout year last year, but also doing so well this year. She said one of her main things is that she's just starting to play more freely and focus on the now rather than the future. And you can tell that's definitely helped her at the plate. 
Gibson will launch that one into right. That one's going to drop down for a base hit. Malloy will round third. She will score. Taylor to third, and Tennessee takes a 1-0 lead. And just stringing hits together any way they can. But I got to give props to Emily Ruck right now because she's not giving up these big hits, these home runs, these hard line drives. They're just these little bloops. She's still keeping Tennessee off balance. You can see right there that McKenna Gibson, she dipped her shoulder down on that left side to just get that bloop over to right field. Almost the exact same position that Malloy blooped that into right field. And Tennessee has struck here in the third with a 1-0 lead, looking to add damage to Ruck and the Buckeyes in the third. Now, Laura Mueller will step in, the dangerous one over at first today. Four home runs here on the weekend. They all came on Friday in the Tennessee Invitational. She hasn't hit anything but a home run this weekend. So... She doesn't quite know what a single, double, triple feels like this weekend. Um, but that's kind of key is once you hit a home run, following up with a big single. But there she goes. She goes for the bunt, and that pitch was a rise ball. Very risky always when you have a rise ball for a bunt because you never want that ball to pop up. Mailer will get down the line quickly as well. We do have a pinch runner down at first in Amanda Allen for Tennessee. The 0-1. Allen was off and running, and that one's fouled back to the screen. Starting to get rowdy here in Knoxville. The Lady Vol Locos up in right field. Their perch that they have patrolled for many years here at Lee Stadium. A lead chance here in Knoxville. You see them up there bundled up. And if you've ever seen the Locos, that is not very Loco attire for them. They definitely like to change it up and wear some interesting attire. Well, for here in Tennessee, this is pretty cold, right? Pretty cold for today, I would say so. Woke up this morning in the 30s. I will say the Locos, one of my favorite things they've worn is they've won the thing one, thing two, but there's so many of them typically. They'll go all the way up to like thing eight, and that one's going to be a rundown. Will Taylor decide to come home? She won't. Great job by Tennessee base running there. All in was just in no man's land, but the second baseman in Farley chases her back to the bag, and Taylor will stay at third. Corda Crux did a great job. She cut off that ball from shortstop and actually ran her all the way back all in over to first and just keeping an eye over at third the entire time. Allen is off and running. Corda Crux drops the softball. And scoring is Katie Taylor. The base running for Tennessee provides here in the third. Now that's just having softball IQ. That was ball number four, automatically all in, is taking second base. There was no reason to throw that ball down to second. So that's just an error coming in, allowing that run in from third. E2 on the catcher, Burns. And Coach Kovac Shanley is going to ask for a review. Our home plate umpire pointed down at first base. I would assume that it is Taylor, excuse me, all in leaving early. That's the only thing guess. I can think of right now. I think I'm with you there, partner. She is, I call her safe at first. It would be a non leaving early call. And Tennessee gets the run, advance is the runners, and now first and second with nobody out in the inning. This is kind of the same spot that Ohio State was in yesterday. They were able to keep this ball game close for most of the game, but then defensively just kind of started breaking down. And it honestly started with Taylor Panel, and look who's up. Panel swinging a hot bat. Had a double back in inning number two. Panel had that massive hit. Two insurance runs and a triple in that big fifth inning for the Lady Vols a night ago. Looking to deliver again, and that one's outside. Count runs at 2-0. and oh.
Ruck. Oh, had that one knocked into the first baseline, and that was just a difficult play over there by number 24, Sam Hackenbrack at first. If this was last night, I would say she makes that grab, but the beaming sun down there at first base, she couldn't find that one in a strike and a sigh of relief for Taylor Panel. A 2-1. That one sky high into the East Tennessee afternoon, calling off everyone is the left fielder in Corletti for a big first out for Emily Ruck. And that was great communication out there in left center field. And then you also have your short stop coming up as well to try to make that play. But nice job, Cordelletti, just calling everyone off. But again, Emily Ruck doing so good in that circle. Even though this game is two to nothing, you haven't seen many hard hits from Tennessee yet this today. Trying to limit the damage for Ruck and the Buckeyes here in the third. Destiny Rodriguez walked on five pitches back in inning number two. She's got on base at an oppressive clip this season, almost getting on base at 40%. The 1-1. One, one. Rise ball upstairs at 2-1. and one. Tennessee, 5 of 11 at the dish today, hitting 455. They've drawn three walks. The offense has done well today against Ruck. But Ruck fires in a strike there, a big one at 2-2. Two and, two. and Ruck just trying to find the place where she can get some calls right now, really keeping that ball low for the most part throughout this entire game. She has a lot of speed, and Coach Shane Lee says it may sound strange, but she has strong fingers. And what she means by that is the fact that she can actually spin the ball really well, use those laces, and get that ball moving. Probably one of the best movement pitchers on staff for Ohio State, according to Coach Shane Lee. It's really good. I like to hear that, Faith. Good analyzing that there from Coach Shane Lee. As Chris Malvo came out to speak with Destiny Rodriguez. He knows this is a big AP here. Rodriguez launches it left field, and it will go just foul again. Rodriguez has stepped up the power with four home runs this season. She almost had a couple more RBI. And watch where this one lands in left field. And Destiny Rodriguez just turned on that pitch. It was beautiful right where you want it in the ballpark too, if it was fair. That one will go past the catcher and Burns, a free 60 feet for Allen and Mueller. And Rodriguez will see a full count with pitch number 70 upcoming for Emily Ruck. The pitch, foul back and Rodriguez is battling here. Rodriguez, a 3.33 hitter. In her 17th start in her sophomore season, and that one fouled back. Burns couldn't hang on to it. And we'll redo the 3 2. Rodriguez is allowing herself right now to see almost every pitch Ruck has because she's thrown pretty much everything at her. The more pitches you can get, the better your at bat can become, and being able to adjust whether you're going to see that rise change. Ninth pitch of the A-B is low. Rodriguez is fired up. And Alana Leach will come to the dish with the bases loaded. Tennessee, to be quite frank, was not great with the bases loaded last night, but they have another opportunity here with one out in the inning. And Coach Kovac, Coach Kovac Shanley still talking to our home plate umpire. Dave Reinecker. I haven't seen any substitutions yet. I figure that's probably what they're going over. 
And here is a substitution down there at third. Destiny Nori will come out. And in is number seven, Mackenzie Bump. We saw her a night ago. And we'll have another, or excuse me, we're just gonna change those kind of Apple watches yeah, out there. Wristbands. Now Mackenzie Bump coming into third base. I like the choice. According to Coach Shane Lee, she says she probably has the best range on the team over at third base, and that's exactly what she wants. She wants to make sure that a ball's not getting by in this infield. You can even see this infield right now. They are all shifted forward. They know they're making the play at home. That's the game plan. They're not going for the double play, but Bump, she's someone who is super athletic. She's fast, and to have range on a corner is so key. Ohio State was in this situation with the runner, or excuse me, the infield in yesterday. The ball hit on a line to quarter cracks, and she fired home for a big second out just before Smith struck out the third batter in the inning. This is kind of a big break in between. Number 10, Alana Leach has been standing there for quite some time. And you can tell Emily Ruck, she's just doing some flips with her shortstop over there, just trying to stay loose to quarter cracks. Is Kovac Shanley out there icing the hitter? <laughs> Now we're having a phone call. She could be. That'll be our home plate umpire, Dave Reinecker, probably relaying the substitutions up here to the booth. Big play in this ball game. Bottom three, one out, bases loaded. For Alana Leach, and that one skips in from Ruck. Nice job behind the dish as Burns just kind of threw that paw out there to keep it in front of her. And this is where Emily Ruck is going to have to get ahead on these hitters. She's now towards the bottom of that lineup, and the last thing she wants to do is get to the top. Currently sitting in the seventh hole is Leach, but ahead in the count, 2-0. Got to think if you're Leach, this is going to be a good pitch. And it was just behind that one as she fouls it off. Trying to climb back into the count is Ruck. And that was a nice pitch too by Ruck. She threw a curveball there, jammed Leach in on the hands, which caused her to pop that ball straight back up. But now you're going to want to be careful. You know Leach is thinking swing. She does there, fouls it back to about the same spot. Early season softball. I get you excited for conference play coming up. Big situation here in the third. Strike three. Emily Ruck with a huge strike out there. And she is one out away from getting out of trouble in the third. And that was a great pitch on the outside corner. And you can see that Ruck actually turned to Jazzy Byrne. And she said, nice frame there. Because that pitch definitely was right on the river. But Jasmine Byrne did a great job. Leach trying to reach her hands. A little late on that ball. Second K of the afternoon, new hitter in for that eight hole spot. Cut Soyanopolis will sit. Sophia Nugent, the Oklahoma transfer in for Tennessee. And painting that inside corner is Ruck for strike number one. And this is where Tennessee struggled yesterday. They left a lot of people on base. So they have they need this timely hitting, figuring out how to get a hit in these big moments. That one borderline there at the knees at one and one. 
And Tennessee, really Ohio State, flirted with disaster yesterday, loading the bases three times. But again and again, the Buckeyes got out of trouble. And they are one strike away from Tennessee stranding the bases loaded for the fourth time in two games. Emily Ruck with her back against the wall, deals the one, two, rise ball is fouled away. And Sophia Nugent also just a great hitter. She transferred from Oklahoma, but actually she spends some of her summers playing for a men's fast pitch league. And when you play for a men's fast pitch league, they throw in the 80s. Their pitchers are a lot faster than what you see in college. And actually, when talking to Coach Gasso last year when she played for Oklahoma, she was surprised. She's like, this is how you spend your summers playing for a men's fast pitch league. And she says it just helps her reconnect with the game and have a little fun while she's out there rather than being in such high pressure situations and just getting back to having fun like they were with this, as they were growing up. I wonder how the men's fast, fast pitch league compares to playing in the big 12 at Oklahoma. As the pitch comes in low and the count will run even at two to two. Well, on the men's side of the game, they are allowed, allowed to replant. They can throw a lot faster. And you're going to see a pitch come in so much quicker, so much less reaction time. And Sophia Nugent said she was the only female out there. Good for her. That's awesome. Getting out there and battling it out with the fellas in the summer. As she will face a huge pitch in this game. She has worked the count full at three and two and she'll foul that one off again. Nugent is seeing pitches here from Ruck. Who will give way here in the third. Tennessee already two in in the third. Looking to add to it and blow this one open as they did in the fifth last night. Rucks 3-2, hit, launched, center field, you can kiss that baby goodbye. Where did that one land? Grand slam for Tennessee. I love it. Sophia Nugent, she was so quiet at the plate. She was sitting back in that batter's box and she just waited for that pitch to come to her. Dead center field, Sophia Nugent, welcome to Knoxville. She didn't even finish that swing, she didn't need to. She barreled up that ball, had great extension. That ball, frankly, nearly down the middle. If that backdrop was not out there in center field, that ball would have went forever. 6-0, Tennessee and Karen Weekly with a soft grin, locking her Tennessee team up 6-0. And that's what Tennessee was missing yesterday was that key hit, but Sophia Nugent coming in as a pinch hitter, right? Being able to step up and get a big hit in a big need. And credit Karen Weekly there, 23 seasons. She knows her situations as fall will now that back here at us. Julia Katsoyanopoulos was due up in that eight hole spot. And she said, all right, Sophia, go up there and do what you do. And did she? Grand slam for Nugent. And Tennessee has blown it open in the six. The crooked number for the Lady Vaz's fall will ground out, but not before. Six runs on three hits and a grand slam, Ohio State. Gotta admit, I really love the unis from both sides today. Ohio State in the all black, with those silver domes with the Ohio State logo in the middle. And Tennessee, if my memory serves me correct, debuting new white uniforms today, or at least this season. Gotta love the script in the front of those unis for the big orange as quarter cracks will step in and see that one in for a strike from Pickens. 
These are two teams, no matter what sport you throw out there, they're gonna have some nice unis. Big uniform guy myself, I must say. The 01 is launched, and what a grab over at first! Laura Mailer can do it all, and she makes a rope catch there for out number one. What a snag, but also what a hard hit by Corda Crux, being able to come up to the plate. Someone like Pickens who throws so hard, all you gotta do is try to barrel up that ball. But look at Mueller there, getting every inch, every piece of air she can underneath those feet to make that jump and that sink. She's also playing further in front of that plate. So you know how much reaction time she had to have to get that? Climb the ladder, Laura Mueller. Two patrolling first over there today. They're the everyday first baseman typically for Tennessee. In battle with Katsoyanopoulos over there first. Credit Ohio State, they've got three hits, but they've really been robbed of three other hits today. They have barreled up Carlin Pickens this afternoon, but the Tennessee defense kind of reciprocating what they saw yesterday from Ohio State just showing off on the defensive side of the softball. Pickens pitch in there for a strike. Three and one to number 14, Destiny Nori, the senior from Chula Vista, California. We'll roll over that one and roll it foul. And you can see when Destiny Nori, she gets in that box, she's actually sitting back in the box, her back foot is all the way nearly on that line. And it's so that she can give herself maybe just an extra split second of being able to see that pitch when you have a pitch coming in so fast. Maria, 330 hitter, 333 hitter here in 2024. Her best batting average so far this season. You mentioned there the footwork of Nori there in the box. The 3-2. That one hit sharply, fall on the backhand. Got her at first. And that was great work, footwork by Fawn. You could see that she took a couple steps into that deep hole and just was able to throw across the diamond. Just a freshman had to come in and take in that place her first year after the retirement of Mackenzie Donahue. So being able to step in as a freshman and play for a team that just went to the Women's College World Series is huge. You could really see the confidence behind that throw from Faw. You know, there on the six all kind of flicked the wrist over there and was feeling that one on the backhand. Now Kirsten Eppley will step in, batting sixth in this lineup. Had a phenomenal grab in center field a night ago, saving three runs for Ohio State. And she launches that one into the sky, but just in front of the warning track, and the grab is made by Alana Leach. One, two, three, go the Buckeyes in the fourth. Tennessee looking to add some insurance. The tall task in facing Kiki Malloy. To roll that one in at 1-0. Tennessee did their damage in the third. A big crooked number up in the third. Six runs for Tennessee. Looking to add to it in the fourth, and Kiki Malloy will see that one outside, 2-0. And, and for Paulson, you're gonna see about every single pitch coming from her. She's gonna have a rise, drop, curve, screw. She's gonna throw everything a little bit off speed. So Tennessee's gonna have to figure out how to be patient. She's gonna throw actually a little bit slower than you saw from Ruck. So just being able to sit back and drive that pitch, which is something that Kiki Malloy is very good at. Malloy two for two today. A couple of singles and a run scored. She'll see that one up and away. 
And we'll trot down to first with nobody out. I love the sound over the PA. The boots were made for walking. And that is just what Kiki Malloy will do here in the fourth. And number 11, Zeta Pooney has the bat, but Karen Weekly discussing with our home plate umpire. And once Kiki Malloy gets to first base, you can automatically already think she's probably going to second, especially with a 6-0 run right here. Zeta Pooney will grab a bat and step in for Tennessee. One for one today. 2023 All-SEC first team member Malloy with a big jump over at first and the trot back. Here in her senior season, she's been on those All-SEC teams twice already, second team in 2022. An all-tournament team in OKC last year. Tennessee looking to get back there for the ninth time. The 1-1. One, one. That's a slow pitch in there to Pooney. And that was a nice pitch by Paulson. An off speed, and if I were Pooney too, I would probably be watching it unless I had two strikes on me. Let that come. Don't swing at a pitch that you know you're not gonna be able to drill hard. Malloy's off and running. Roller down to third, a nice grab made. Malloy with a big turn at third, but Bump newly inserted over there at third. Well, filled her position nicely to get out number one. And this is where Tennessee is going to have to make an adjustment. They're going to have to sit back on those pitches, be able to drive it to the right side. You have Paulson, who's throwing just a little bit slower than you saw out of Brooks. So you're going to have to wait and allow that pitch to get deep. Boo Gibson will step in just the three home runs so far this season. A combined 26 in her two seasons prior, the junior has. And you know one's coming for Boo Gibson in this lineup. Just a matter of when. And she'll roll over that one. Quarter cracks will fire over to first for out number two in the inning, and Malloy will stay put at second. I was really setting her up there for a home run, but she rolls over a ground ball. And now Laura Mailer. You make a play on the infield, you grab her bat, and you come in and hit. Speaking of home runs, someone who's hit all home runs this weekend. See, they walked and scored a run in that big third inning. And if you're Tennessee, Paulson does not throw super hard. You just gotta say, stay back on that back foot, wait on it and explode to the softball. And they will look to do so here with an 0-1 count. Two gone in the fourth. Run that one away. Paulson did a nice job. Last couple ABs. She smartly kind of tiptoed around Kiki Malloy and it's worked for her so far. That one launched center field home run almost off the top of the wall. Malloy will score and it's an RBI double for Laura Mueller. Almost another home run for Mueller. Look at that, she sits back, drives with that back hip, explodes and extends right up the middle where that pitch came from. And if that ball was either towards that left field or right field, that would have been a fence. Those fans, just alike as myself up here, look like that one was going over the wall. But Mueller will take her first non-home run of the weekend. 
and will throw it up with a double. And Tennessee's got lucky number seven here in this one. You can still tell Tennessee fans are starting to get a little bit more hyped, a little bit more up, more energy out here than what started earlier in this game. You got to think for Tennessee and these fans, this is kind of like a warm up for these fans. The weather trying to start to get warm and SEC play looming next week. We better have those vocal, vocal cords ready to roll next weekend when Missouri comes to town. Excited to be on the call with you for all three between the Tigers and Lady Vols next weekend. Big, big games this weekend. They'll have one more on the road tomorrow for Tennessee, but then back here at home against Mizzou to start out SEC play, which started this weekend. Mentioned Missouri coming into Knoxville. They got two wins already over the number 25 team in the country in Auburn. What I think is a really fun matchup. Two programs that are as good as they come in the SEC playing a Saturday through Monday series this weekend. Florida and Alabama. Those two teams with a combined 39 and five record to start this season. And I think a team that we've got to keep our eye on coming in currently in the ESPN.com USA softball rankings, the highest ranked team in the SEC has delivered number three LSU, 21-0, 2-0 in the SEC thus far. And they will come here to Knoxville as the second home SEC opponent for Tennessee. And there's nothing like starting conference play. Your attitude changes, the energy changes. That one caught out in right field. Taylor Heckman went the grab, but not before. Out there having some fun here at Rocky Top. Savannah Bananas. I'm glad we fitted that into this contest. This is strike. One is thrown to Sam Hackenbrack. I love me a good home plate umpire with a good strikeout move. And I feel really bad for Dave Reinecker behind the dish now because everybody on TV is going to be watching him now, waiting on it. So no pressure back there. This is his moment. But he's also been super consistent, which I love to see as well. That one golf swinged into center field and a follow up just short and into Kiki Malloy's glove for out number one. Hackenbrack tried to go down and get that one. Golfs that one in the center, and much like my golf game, nothing really doing there. Sixty-eight pitches in for Carlin Pickens here in the fifth, and that one away. Pickens inefficient. Four and one-third innings today has kind of sprinkled in those three hits, but no damage done from the Buckeyes today. Four strikeouts and no walks for the sophomore sensation, and that one be rolled over as number seven, McKenzie Bump, at the dish. Would I love to see more even than the strikeouts, but the limiting the walks, no walks is so huge. Free bases hurt you so much, especially when you're going into SEC play this weekend. You gotta be efficient. The one one to bump is rolled over and Rodriguez makes a nice play fielding to her right for the second out in the inning. And that was great movement by Rodriguez over there at second base. She moved her quick feet quick and was able to just make that little flip over first. Number nine in this lineup, batting 312, but already with a single today, Caitlin Farley will step in. It was back in inning number three that it seemed like Ohio State was gonna get things going. They had two on in Farley and Cordelletti, but nothing doing for the Buckeyes there in inning number three. 
as they look to get the bats going in the fifth. And there's that pick and smile. She's having fun. Well, it's so much nicer as a pitcher, too, when you're in that circle and you're up seven to nothing. You know you can play a little bit more loose. You can throw maybe pitches that maybe you're working on a little bit more and just try some other stuff out. Or 1-0, and that is a check swing in for a strike to Farley at one and one. The pitch. Slow one in there at one and two. Pickens can dial it back when she needs to. And I love that off speed. It seems like it's just getting better and better with her each and every week. That pitch is going to be key for her success this season, especially since she had such a great freshman season. She now has a target on her back. Swung on and missed, strike three, throw down is in time. Fifth strikeout of the afternoon for Nugent was grand in the third, and she had her number called and delivered as Destiny Rodriguez will take that one off the Evo shield, and Dave Reinecker is going to call her back in here. He's calling a foul ball. Check this one out. Our phenomenal replay crew this weekend. Are they going to say she dipped down into that one? Her hand elbow may have been over the plate, which may have been what the call is. From that angle, we technically couldn't tell. So she may have been a little bit further over the plate, which is what maybe he was seeing behind there. And he's going to go check it out. Karen Weekly is going to ask for a look at this one. We had kind of the same situation last night with Laura Mueller. At first glance, it looked like she had dipped into it, did Mueller last night, but they overturned it and really again is foul ball. Owen one count here in the fifth as we'll check this for Destiny Rodriguez. I mean, it's it looked like she was setting up for her swing and just left her elbow where it was. I don't. I'm not sure where the foul ball call mm. is coming from. Because she looks like she just has that small motion, just like she's about to take a pitch. Hits her Evo shield. You make a really good point. They did roll foul ball. And maybe Dave Reinecker behind the plate thinks that hits the knob of the bat. Because that did not hit any piece of that softball bat. And that's what they're ruled. And Dave's been phenomenal behind the plate today. That's just really hard to see in kind of a bang bang instance. Absolutely. When you're behind the plate, you really can't see anything that's happening in front of you. That's why we have the video reviews, which I love that have been added into softball. You get to a game. Good use of a replay there from Karen Weekly. And Rodriguez will be awarded first, and Coach Kovac Shanley seems a little confused down there as she speaks with our home plate umpire. But yeah, that call confirmed. Clears day right off that nice Evo shield. I'm glad that hitters these days are happy that those were made, not taking one off the elbow anymore as Alana Leach will step in and foul that one back that eye level with us at 0-1. Tennessee looking for that elusive eighth run here in the fifth. And that one, a strike upstairs to Leach at 0-2. 
It'll be Leach, Kutsoyanopoulos, and Faw do up. We did, see, we did see Nugent grab a bat. In the third for Kutsoyanopoulos, that rise ball runs upstairs at one and two. And Paulson keeping with her off speed, making Tennessee sit back and stay deep in their legs. You notice she just had that rise ball. I wouldn't be surprised to see her throw another off speed here. That one two is hit into the air, into right field. Heckman all alone will make the grab for out number one. And now if you're Julia Kutsoyanopoulos, you love that your teammate came in and hit a grand slam, but you know that kind of gets at you a little bit. So Julia trying to step in here and show show out here on the fifth. What's great about this Tennessee team though is they are so close off the field. They have such great team chemistry. I mean, what team doesn't that goes to the Women's College World Series? You have to have that in order to be successful. So knowing that even when you step up at the plate, maybe it's not your day, but you know your teammate behind you is gonna step in and be able to do it for you. I'm sure they see each other every single day from probably January to July if they're fortunate enough. Double digit hours probably a lot of the day, so you got to get close. It almost feels like, but when you do get really close, you have special seasons like you had a season ago. You really don't have an option in softball. You're either on buses for hours at airports, on planes, so you really do turn to your teammates and they are like your sisters. And earlier interviews in the season with some of these players for Tennessee, they said they kind of had some hiccups in the fall, but really were able to figure it out. Katsoyanopoulos will throw that one under the glove of Farley. Nice hitting there from Julia Katsoyanopoulos, and she says, yeah, I can get a hit myself. And she'll stand on first after this single. And what I like about that hit is she sits back. She's able to take it to the right side. That was an outside pitch extension. Beautiful. It's a hard hit softball. A hard hit ball, which is something we haven't seen a lot of from Tennessee. Well, take away the Sophia Nugent home run and Miller coming up, almost hitting another home run. But take those three hits away. They've kind of been off the bat or jammed up. If you're just joining us, Tennessee six runs in inning number three. An inning ago, they had just a run across the board with a seven nothing lead. Tennessee was able to get to starter Emily Ruck in the third and is now looking to do battle against Lexi Paulson. Here in the fifth, leading seven nothing with the nine hole hitter in Bella Fall. At the dish, and that one rolled over. This could be two for Ohio State on the first. She's safe. That one was close at first. That was an extremely close play Falls down. at first base, but you did hear the umpire yell time there. So Fa is going to have to go back to first base. Good call there, partner. Umpires did yell time and yeah fall will have to try back and she is safe at first is Bella Fall and now runners on the corners for Kiki Malloy in the fifth looking to send Tennessee home happy and cap off a four nothing Tennessee invite record for the Lady Vols Lloyd two for two today. Also walked in the fourth. And she'll see a nice pitch in there from Paulson at strike one. If there's anyone you want up to bat in this type of situation to try to get you out of a game, it's gonna be Kiki Malloy. She's stepping up, it's her senior year. And she wants to end it. She's someone who is working on her swing, just trying to be a lot quieter, which you can tell really helps her when she's facing these pitchers that are throwing a lot of off speed, a lot of spin pitches. 
and she just wants to be explosive this year. You can tell she's hungry. Kiki Malloy is looking for a home run, for her home run, her first home run in the Tennessee Invitational. She did have a home run against Stetson last weekend and then two against Longwood in the Tennessee Classic. So she has homered three times here in her graduate season. But she'll see a 3-1 here with Zeta Pooney looming on deck. Does Paulson go at Malloy? Setting up on that outside. And no, they will not. Burns, you could tell, wanted that one away. That was purposeful by Paulson to walk Malloy there. She wants the bases loaded. You could tell she started going after Kiki Malloy, but I think Coach Shanley was like, hey, we're going to switch this up. Let's just walk her, get the bases loaded. Now we have a play at any bag, so wherever it's hit, they're just going to take it to the closest play they can make. Tennessee with a 7-0 lead, bases loaded, two outs. A big eighth run is what the Lady Vols are looking for. The one up. In there for a strike to Pooney, and the count will run even. Tennessee looking to get win number 19 on, or excuse me, 18 on the season. Ohio State looking to hang around Knoxville a moment longer. They will face South Dakota about 30 minutes after final pitch here in this one. And Pooney launches that foul right side. It's been a great weekend of softball. Yesterday was kind of rough with the weather, but getting in a lot of softball in this weekend for all these schools. Missouri State, South Dakota, Ohio State, and Tennessee have done battle this weekend. Tennessee looking to cap off a perfect weekend. One, two, and he's away in the counter run even. This is another hitter that you really don't want up in this situation either. Pony's had a hot bat all weekend long, all season long. She's been able to really focus on her hitting. The two, two. Is low and Ohio State hanging around one ball away from ending this one. Rodriguez at third, Faw at second, Malloy at first. Seven runs on eight hits for Tennessee. An eighth run would win it here. And Zeta Pooney will do it in style. Goodbye. We don't want eight runs, we want 11. And number 11 with a second grand slam of the day for Tennessee. Is there any other way that Tennessee can go out? I mean, they love ending games with some big swings. That's two grand slams.